My name is Farida Nasereka. I work with Uwezo Uganda. One of the partners for the PAL network and a member organization that has conducted citizen-led assessments since uh, um, 2019. So in this micro module, we are going to get insights into how we conduct a citizen-led assessment and following some examples from what we have been doing for the period we've conducted the citizen-led assessments. So in this module, we are going to cover three main areas that will give us detailed understanding on how we can conduct the assessments. The first one is survey preparation. Then we shall look at how to conduct the, uh, the citizen-led assessment and then how to manage data and analysis for the citizen-led assessment. When we prepare for the survey, this is one of the preliminary stages that is undertaken. And the process involves three key areas, which include obtaining permissions, piloting the assessment, and selecting coordinators and volunteers. So gaining insights into how we obtain permissions is done in four different levels. The first one is at the national level, where we seek research permits and ethical approvals. And these are followed by the country guidelines for conducting research and surveys. We do submit protocols for the assessment that detail how we shall conduct the assessment, the sample, as well as the tools, and have these submitted to respective IRBs, as well as uh, to the National Council for Science and Technology that sanctions all researchers in the country. So when approval for this is sought, then we go to the Ministry of Education, which has the mandate over the schools. Citizen-led assessments are not only conducted at household level, but also in schools. So the ministry gives approval for the partners, as well as the volunteers we engage, to collect data in the respective schools. So in the event that the approvals are sought, at least we know that that level of entry in schools will be a smooth one. The next level for securing approval is at the district level. As you saw from the micro module two, the design of the citizen-led assessment involves sampling. And when the sample has a given number of districts, each of these districts is visited and the district leadership is introduced to the assessment as well as all the procedures and the subnational sample, which indicates all the villages and enumeration areas that are to be visited in a particular district. So once the approval at the district level is sought, we then move to the village level. And the village level is also another administrative structure under the district in which the respective enumeration areas that have been sampled are situated. So when we are there, we do introduce the pre-assessment activities to the local leaders. And these include what we will actually do before the assessment, and here, the engaged local partner details the processes that will be followed to sample the respective households, as well as processes that will be involved in recruiting the manpower that will be used to conduct the assessment. The ground is then laid for the upcoming assessment as well, because the team has to introduce to the village local leader the processes that will follow after the preliminary undertakings at the village level have been concluded. So going through these different four levels for approvals enables and eases entry for the processes that follow, as well as also gives credibility to the citizen-led assessment. Preparation also involves piloting the assessment. By this point, we have already developed the tools that we shall use to collect assessment data, as well as also collect data at the school and the village. But we must need to know that we need to try out all these tools, the process, as well as the logistics that are involved, 
prior to undertaking the assessment. And this is done in an entire district so that we mirror out what exactly will happen at the time of the assessment and to see what works and does not work. So at this point, we ensure that exactly what will be done at the assessment is duplicated. For example, the sample, the sample of households is exactly that of 20 households that are assessed at the assessment. And the procedures, including assessing the children and all the entries at the household and village level, as well as the school, are also exactly undertaken the same way that they would have been for the assessment. So during the pilot, we visit the village leaders, collect data there. We visit a school that serves particular areas that have been sampled, as well as also 20 households. So the next stage that follows while we are piloting is also to ensure that we document this process so that all the gaps that we have identified are sorted before we conduct the assessment. And another key crucial element is to have the experts who supported in developing the tools to participate because they are part of the process and are able to observe what is working or misbehaving with the tools that needs to be tweaked and adjusted. Then finally, when we prepare for the survey, we also need to know that we have to select coordinators as well as volunteers who will help us coordinate the processes. It's important to also note that assessment processes are also anchored in partnerships and collaborations that support and aid in pushing through all activities prior to, during, and after the assessment. So here we quickly go through categories of partners that we collaborate with and at, the, at different points of the survey. Like Alia mentioned, we have the ministry who comes in to, uh, to approve, as well as also other relevant ministries that support sampling, as well as also um, approving different aspects of the survey. We also have district officials. We have test developers who play particular roles in ensuring tools are well aligned and um, available. Then we have the core um, partners that are highlighted yellow. And these are the ones that are very crucial to be selected prior to the assessment. These include the district partner organizations, the district coordinators, as well as the volunteers who are central to the assessment being conducted. So these partners are selected in a manner that is also important for us to appreciate. So the local partner who is selected at the district level to coordinate the assessment is selected through a criteria that they have to meet and abide by. The partner should be a locally based partner because we want local capacity to be built for assessment as well as advocacy for improvement of learning outcomes. The partner has to operate in the sample district and have a good understanding of undertakings within the sample, within the sampled enumeration areas, as well as where the different um, enumeration areas are located. They should also have programs linked to education or related sectors because they are easy to move with on the journey of advocating for improved learning outcomes. The partner should also meet basic capacities, including staffing, communication, as well as planning. And they should have a proven track record of integrity because it's important that the partners we engage and work with have credibility to be able to be ambassadors for citizen-led assessments. Volunteers are also another crucial partner that are selected and engaged. And these are the enumerators that collect data at the village school and in the households. They are identified through a criteria as well. And these require that we produce a call for volunteers to enable equal opportunities for would-be volunteers to apply without any limitations. So the call for volunteers is placed at different points in the community, busy trading uh, centers, worship places, markets, so that equal chances are given to everyone. 
the volunteers meet a criteria that involves being residents residents of the village or enumeration area because it's important that they continue conversations and um, discussions around learning outcomes. They should be able to also speak and read the language of assessment, which is English and local languages in Uganda, considering that the curriculum used here uses both to instruct and teach learners. Similarly, a volunteer should be able to have completed at least 12 years of basic education and also demonstrate ability to understand and also answer appropriately all the tasks in the English and numeracy tasks. They should also be of good sound, good character and morals because they interface with households and families and they might jeopardize the assessment processes if their behaviors and characters are wanting. They should also have access to a functional mobile phone because they are always sought and reached out for supervision and monitoring activities. And then lastly, they should be passionate about learning and education, considering that they take on a role of ambassadoring and continuing discussions on learning. The local partner who has already identified a staff at that level works closely with the local administrative leaders in the village to select volunteers to also ensure that they give recommendations as well as are able to approve the and recommend the volunteers for the tasks that they will be undertaking. Volunteers are similarly interviewed by the district coordinator and village coordinator who form the team of staff from the partner organizations that conduct the interviews and select volunteers. Two volunteers per enumeration area, a male and a female, are engaged to collect the data at the village school and household levels. And it's important that the gender balance is observed to ensure that all gender considerations when dealing with children at the household level are managed well. These volunteers are then paired to conduct the assessment and they should move in their given pair because it's important that they reinforce the work of each other. Where one conducts the assessment, the other is possibly trying to explain to audiences that gather around to gain more insights into why the assessment is being conducted. But also to ensure that the child is comfortable enough to undertake the assessment. We shall now go through how to conduct the survey. There are quite a number of preliminary steps that have to be undertaken before the assessment. These need to be followed so that a fertile ground is laid and we have ruled out all issues that we had piloted and then are now set to conduct the assessment. One of the preliminary steps that is undertaken is to ensure that the local partner that is engaged has mapped out all the boundaries of the enumeration area and has listed all the households as well as samples because this is where the volunteers will have to go and collect data. At the same time, we need to have concluded all the trainings for the trainers as well as for the volunteers, which are mostly theoretical and practical to ensure that these are hands-on and a detailed understanding of how to conduct the assessment. We must also ensure that these two crucial stages, all the village level undertakings, including uh, listing and sampling, have been fully uh, observed with quality and in compliance to standards and that all the trainings have also followed the clearly stated guidelines and standards for training. Once we are ready with all the preliminary steps, we then move into conducting the assessment. The volunteers will first visit the village leader to conduct the village survey. They interview the LC leader to get insights and record data on the main socioeconomic activities in the village. 
the services in the village, including education, health and infrastructure, as well as community participation in the education issues, aspects of which we link to the assessment findings and see whether there are supportive factors in the community that influence learning. At the school level, which is the next stage of the survey, interviewing is done with the head teacher as well as classroom teachers. And in this, we collect data on enrollment, attendance, and resourcing. Classroom observations particularly help in ensuring that we get data on attendance of both the learners and the teachers. We also observe the learning aids in the classroom and get details of the language that is used for instruction. The class teacher is as well interviewed to get insights into their demographics as well as their level of education and motivators for teaching as well as any challenges that they encounter. We also do observations of the school in relation to water, sanitation and hygiene facilities as well as other indicators in the school that aid learning. Then the next step is for the volunteers to visit the household where they interview the household head or an adult that has been found in the home. And here, the data that is collected includes demographics of the household as well as of the household head. And then wealth indicators by looking and observing assets that are available. We also collect data on water sanitation and hygiene as well as nutrition because all these factors contribute or affect learning outcomes in a way. Then lastly, at the household level, when we interface with the household head, we also collect data on children's disability using the Washington tool on disability. The volunteers then, after engaging with the parents, engage with the child and collect data before assessing the children in literacy and numeracy. They will get an understanding of the school attendance, including the type of school that the child attends, the class, whether they've attended pre-primary, the schooling status, including whether the child is in school, dropped out, or has never enrolled, and then eventually assess literacy and numeracy. And once they have completed the assessment and are able to know what the child can or cannot do, then they engage with the parent in a discussion and conversation so that they gain insights into what their child can be able to do. And this is what we call the instant feedback. It is done to trigger conversations and actions at the household level so that parents can, within their means, support learning outcomes. And then on this slide, I will quickly take us through what is assessed and how it is assessed. The process involves the volunteers asking the child to read any letters of the alphabet. And here the child selects what they are to read. If they are able to read five letters of the alphabet, then we proceed to the word level. But if they are unable, then they are regarded a non-reader. Once they are able to also select by themselves any five words and read them right, then we proceed to the paragraph level where they choose one of these two paragraphs to read. If they are able to make less than two mistakes, we then proceed to the story level, which they read without making more than four mistakes, and then they are given the comprehension questions. The process of assessment is one that requires the volunteer to be very steady and observe the stages and guidelines for the assessment. Whenever a child is unable to fulfill the requirements for that level, they are regarded a level lower. But in case they fulfill the requirements and are able to read appropriately, then they are taken to the next level as well. And the final level that they are able to read comfortably and appropriately is where they are recorded as being able to either do literacy or numeracy in a given subject. 
As this assessment is being conducted, we also undertake monitoring and recheck to ensure that there is fidelity to the implementation process, but also that quality is observed. It's very important that the data collected is of quality and that all the loopholes in generating the data as well as processes have been clearly followed as indicated in the standards. Undertaking the monitoring and uh, collection of monitoring data is done by support teams at the district level that include trainers as well as the district teams of the district coordinator and the village coordinator. And here, as the assessment is being conducted, they visit two households in two villages observe the proceedings, and then guide volunteers when things are not going right. Emerging issues are also discussed with the rest of the volunteers in a particular district so that the same mistakes are not repeated. This is to ensure that everyone does follow the processes in the same way. Rechecks are also done after the data has been collected to ensure that what has been received and the processes for generating the data were observed and within the guidelines that were stated. It is done within two days after the data collection has been concluded in at least two villages in a district. Similarly, a desk recheck is done when the data is collected from the volunteers and before it is submitted to the secretariat. This is done by the partner at the district level who also ensures that they go through each and every survey booklet to check for missing data so that all this is dealt with before the data is then advanced to the center for entry and management. Monitoring and recheck data is collected and analyzed for which lessons for improvement are as well sought to feed into the next cycle of the assessment. The last stage of conducting citizen-led assessments involves managing the data as well as analyzing it so that it is disseminated. In the stages that are undertaken to manage and analyze data, we first do a validation of the data, which is one of the key processes that is done before the survey booklets are returned to the Secretariat. And as earlier shared, this is a role that the partner undertakes and ensures that every village is accounted for within the district and all its data is fully complete. Once all the data has been received from the districts, it is then sent to the data management center for entry. And the software that has been developed as well as guidelines are put in place to ensure that the data entry is done right. We also do a re-entry of the data to ensure that we manage the data entry errors. And in doing so, 10% of the enumeration of village data is re-entered. And where gaps, significant gaps are realized, we then do a complete re-entry of the entire park from the district. Data processing and analysis then follows to ensure that we have reports in place that will then be disseminated and shared at the national, subnational, and village level. And one of the village level sharings is actually done prior to the data coming into the secretariat. And here, a village compilation sheet, which is part of the survey booklet, consolidates all the household's data into a sheet that is discussed by the volunteers at the community level to ensure that discussions are triggered towards action within the means of the community to improve learning. We definitely underfaced some challenges in implementing the surveys and I will share some of these as well as the strategies we undertake to mitigate them. Some of the challenges include varying priorities of local partners. The assessment is anchored in activities that are related to education. And in some cases, we fail to get local partners who 
have operations and activities in education. So the mismatch in their priorities at times makes it very difficult for them to adhere to the principles and guidelines that we establish. So to mitigate that, we strictly adhere to selection criteria that we have already established and shared, and then also do a partner performance review so that where changes are needed, we do adjust before another cycle of the assessment is done. Another challenge is identifying sufficient volunteers that meet the criteria. Quite often we'll find that some of the volunteers do not have a minimum of O-level certificate or 12 years of basic education, and yet it's important that these are residents and must be picked from the sampled village. So what happens then is to broaden our search to the next village or at a parish level, and also try to balance the strengths of the volunteers. If in a particular village we have one who's not very strong, we we'll speak another from another village and pair them so that they are able to work um, within the best capacities. We also face some entry-level challenges at the school, especially where we collect data from the private schools that have less interface with the ministry and local governments in terms of supervision and monitoring the activities. So what usually happens is that the letter of introduction that we pick from the ministry is used and is very crucial at this point. And then we also ensure that the partners that we have selected are reliable partners who also have good working relations with district officials who then support where such gaps are experienced or challenges are experienced. Then at dissemination, at times appreciating the findings to steer pathways for change is very slow. And this is because at times one might not easily relate with the issues that we identify when we mention or, ident or bring up the fact that learning levels are low. So to do this and manage this, we walk the journey with the key actors and have them participate in the survey so that they experience firsthand what we mean when we say that children's learning outcomes are low. Once they're able to see a child struggling to do the tasks given, then they are easier to convince to walk the journey with us and advocate for improvement of learning outcomes. Thank you very much.